you want to show us some of your jeans? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I brought I brought a few. Brought the ones that you asked me to bring, and I brought some other ones too. Let me bust them out. So when you make these, do you do everything, or do you have someone else print it and bind it? Yeah. So uh, my first like seven or yeah six or seven, um, I'll put everything together. I'll format it, um, do all that. Use YouTube if I don't know how. Um, so I've learned how to do that. Um, and then I have these amazing printers. Shout out to uh, Printing Works in Pomona. That's where I live. Um, to Ali and uh, Jason. They're really amazing and they help me print this stuff. Um, so they print all of it, collate it, and then I'll bring it home and I'll fold it and sew it. That's how I've always done all my zines. This last one though, this is my most recent one. This was a, in collaboration with Ellie Zinefest this year. Um, it's called This Is What Community Looks Like. And this zine ended up being a gigantic zine. It was, it's 82 pages. And I've never done a zine that big. And I didn't realize, I didn't think about binding, I didn't think about any of that stuff or changing that stuff until I finished this zine pretty much, putting it together. And I was like, whoa, I don't think I can sew 82 pages. That's gonna like probably break my sewing machine. Um, so I talked to my friend Rob and he's like, hey, you should perfect bind it with one of my binders in Santa Ana. Um, so that's what I did. I perfect binded it, which is I'm really stoked on because I've never done anything that fancy. Mm -hmm. And so it's funny because I actually ended up sewing this zine still, mm -hmm. but just a page in there. Um, that's a funny story. I, I accidentally left two entries out of this zine mm -hmm. and I had already printed this whole entire thing, formatted it, and there was no way that I could leave these two out. Like I've never, you know, dissed anyone like that in that way. So I was like, I'm going to put it in. So I was trying to figure out how to do it, whether I was going to glue it or not. And so I decided to sew it and it's really cool because it's like a fold out now mm -hmm. and it's also a surprise. So if anyone that picks up my zine, Pull out this thing and look on either side. Okay, I'm not gonna tell you in the video, but pull it all the way out and check it out because there's some secret stuff in there. It's pretty cool. But yeah, so um, there's a, there's all these people that help me out with creating these um, projects that I'm really grateful for, and yeah, they make it beautiful. It's cool. Yeah, um, at Printing Works, just like when I did this Kimya Dawson zine, it was really cool because this was probably like one of my fifth or sixth zines. And this one's awesome because I decided to make like the pages different colors, right? Oh. But my printing guy, Ali, was like, okay, dude, I'm gonna let you deal with the machine. Cause usually they'll just like take the project and print it and then I'll come back and get it. But he was like, okay, I'm gonna let you take care of this file. Cause it was like really confusing. So that was really cool. He let me behind the desk and everything. Got to use a computer for it and, and print it out. And so, yeah. Did you send a copy to Kimia Dawson? Man, I haven't. You're the like fifth person to ask me that because I don't know her address and I don't know how to ask for it. And I've actually tried asking for for her address, but she's never gone back to me. And I read somewhere like on somewhere on social media, her her Instagram or something, that she like doesn't respond to emails. <laughs> like she'll go through them, you know. But it's pretty rare to get a because she I'm sure she gets like a ton of fan mail, right? Mm -hmm. So. I heard on one of her yeah. shows. True. Yeah. I mean, yeah, since I made this zine, I haven't seen her play anywhere here where I could actually go see her. But if that happens, for sure, she's getting this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So Kimia Dawson, if you're watching, yeah. send a copy. I made this zine about you, um, about your work and about your words and about what you share with the, with the world and us. And it's pretty cool. It's just um, some illustrations of your lyrics and other stuff. Um, this one is one of my first zines. It's called Skate Team. Uh, it's about growing up with skateboarders as role models. And these are uh, through the means of like magazines, videos, and stuff that I had available to me. Because um, I didn't really have role models growing up, so I just kind of found my own through this subculture. And I feel like that really shaped me into who I am, but also taught me a lot. And yeah, so this is, this is cool. This is Jeff Rowley right here. One of my first professional skateboards, like not from Kmart or something, was from, was a Jeff Rowley board from Flip. I still remember that graphic. It was like a black cat. It was like that cat from Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. So yeah, this is just a zine about, you know, certain skaters that inspire me but that inspired me um, and still do. So it's illustration of their face and then some 
memory or recollection of them, um, how they affected me growing up. The one I look back on a lot is actually this one called Where It All Goes, and it's about heartbreak and loss. And I look back on this when I'm feeling sort of um, depressed or just kind of sad, and it helps me. It helps me a lot with knowing that, um, at least for me, like my healing process is constant, and it's not something that I need to rush or feel like I have to reach an end point with it. I feel like it's a constant, just like I said earlier, like when I wake up every day, I feel like it's just a challenge that you take on, right? However you're gonna deal with what you're dealing with. And so that's, so I'm really grateful for this zine because this is another compilation zine where I ask people about heartbreak and loss. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just like moving this around all crazy. And yeah, so they, you know, shared their stories about that. And um, I look back on this a lot and I read about, I read other people's entries and see how they deal with, yeah, loss and heartbreak. So it's really cool. This one's cool. This is one of my favorite drawings from this. Um, I was getting these, these cookies from Trader Joe's a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this entries, it says, what does it say? Hoping she doesn't exist cookies. <laughs> and so I use that, that cookie um, package as a reference to change the words. Yeah.